today's update is I finally finished the PCF component that will allow us to create dynamic forms based on JSON you pass in. So you haven't watched my video about creating the Cloud 365 tool, but I'm not going to go through that again, but go and watch that definitely. But what I want you to do is in the Cloud 365 tool belt, I want you to be able to have one screen that deals with all of the tools, but has a dynamically changing form based on what we pass in. So let me just show you what I built. So this control here, let's just close this down and show you the power ups design view. This control here has two properties, JSON form, which is a structure of JSON that defines a form. So if you've ever done any dynamic form building, you'll probably be familiar with this. And then a prompt. So the prompt is something that we want to, if it's an AI tool, it's a prompt that we would want to send off to something like ChatGPT or Claude AI because we need to go get response back from AI and we don't want to have to remember all of these prompts. So that's in a way to personalize a prompt based on what a user enters. So if we just play this and just talk you through this. So what we've got here is we've got a JSON here that's got fields listed. So you'll notice there's one, two, three, four fields here which actually relates to the four fields. So there's four fields in this array. So just to tell you very quickly what this is. So topic one refers to that one. It's a type of text. And obviously if you're looking at that, it's a text box. It is mandatory. So if I don't go and enter some information, you're probably going to see a validation only, which you do, because I've done my coding job properly. So that's just saying you need to enter something into it. Then we can also provision a default value. So you might have this default starting value when the actual control first loads. So that gives provision for that. And then secondly, because John and Carl really wanted it, I put the provision in for a pull down list. And so this section here creates the pull down list. So again, it's got an ID, it's got a label there. So if I go change that, you'll see actually changes in real time, which is cool. Then you've got default value, which is going to be selected as funny when the first time the control loads and then some options. So if I want to go and put a different option in, I can go for funny RR and you'll notice funny RR there. And because I've just selected funny RR, it's updated there in my resolve prompt, which I'll mention in a second. And it's also updated here. And it's also updated in the JSON array there that we send out from this control. So effectively, this control syncs up everything you do based on what you pass in here and it passes it out. So you can then use it because obviously because it's JSON, you can do further processing with it in things like Power Automate and also Power Apps. And in fact, that's what I've done here because this is actually a gallery control. So the other one is a checkbox. The checkbox is fairly straightforward. Yes, it has a default value of yes. It's checkbox, it's not required. It's a bit of a misdemeanor, that one, because you won't know if actually his off is true. And then date birth. So I wanted a date picker. So we can now pick a date and you'll notice that all of the controls on the left and the bottom are updated as I type stuff. Let's go to today, let's pick the fourth. There's the date passed in, the dates in there, and also the dates in there. So that all works hunky dory. You can create these on the fly. So if I wanted to go and change, maybe I wanted to go and change this to text. That should probably work. Submit this text. Whoops. There you go. That's now text box, which is very cool. And if we want to go and say date of birth is now that. Notice it's all changing. That's all cool. It's updated everywhere. Then we can pull that back to date. And it becomes a date picker again. And you can add these as you want. So if I want to go and add another one, let's go and add one in quickly. So we've got ID equal, oh, I need to put it in double quotes, ID mark one. I'm not going to bother about formatting because I want to be able to see the one above. Label, bank, date, and let's make it text. Okay, and let's just end that there so you can see it coming on. And then I might want to put a mand typo. That's the other one we need to pass in. Type all, oh, need to put that in double quotes, and it's going to be a type of text. So we've just added that extra one in there. It's called Mark One. It's a label of text. Let's make that better. Let's say first name. Okay, and then we enter a value in there now. You can see I haven't actually provisioned it in here in the input prompt. In fact, I could. Let's go put it in the input prompt. It's Mark One. So let's put a token in saying Mark One. And you can see it's now replaced that, which is perfect. So I've typed in there, which is absolutely awesome. So this allows us, effectively, you don't, this is like optional for us. You only really need this if the tool is going to be an AI tool that you're going to send off to things like ChatGPT, which is open AI. It's optional. But if you do supply it, that's like a real good helper way of getting the actual prompt that you could send into something like ChatGPT. 
but you can just supply the JSON form. So this thing actually could work for us just as a survey tool or some kind of quiz tool. It will adapt to whatever you put in here, which gives us the ability to, if businesses were to create something like this themselves, it's made me think if you wanted to create a new form in your business. So for example, like you want to create a new contract or you want to create like a survey feedback form and you want the business users to do it. What you could effectively do is you could provision a front end to create that format for you because you wouldn't want to already create that because it's very easy to make mistakes. So you create a little tool to create that, which stores it inside of a list. And then you could expose the whole tool like we've done as an app and have a form that just draws itself. And there you go. You wouldn't even need to have any developers creating that form for you. And because we've got it all in JSON coming out, and what I've done is I'll show you quickly, we've thread it all out to Power Automate. You could do what you want with it. You could actually just go and store it in SharePoint list. You could do further processing with it. You can put it in Power BI, whatever you wanted to. This is just an example of how we've done a gallery. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to see how easy it is to get hold of the JSON. So if you look here, we've got a parse JSON, which is the JSON form full output, which is this. So we give it all that JSON with all the values in, the fields. And then inside of here, what we've got is all you do is do convert it to text because it doesn't know the types of the JSS at the time of designing. So you just wrap it when you know it's going to be text, you wrap it around. So this dot die dot value dot IED and this dot value dot value, which is a bit strange, but we could go pick other things. We could go pick if we wanted to the, the placeholder, I think it was placeholder, no, default value, default. So we could go pick that from the JSON too, and that should work. So yeah, this is the default value. Funny, yes, absolutely cool. So this is really flexible for us. I've got many more plans for it because what I want to do, I want to provide more support for more types of control. So for instance, if we want to go in a copy a list, for example, what you'd want to be able to do is pick the list that you want to copy. So I'm going to create like a SharePoint picker. I'm going to create a planner picker because you might have a follow on action that wants to go and put something in planner as a task, or you might want to go pick a team. You definitely want to go pick a file out of thought. So I'm going to provide support for more types in this. So I think it'd be really flexible for us. So how are we using it? Well, that's all now wired in because I've spent the afternoon making sure we can use it. It's all wired in here. So here are our tools. If we want to go and create a tweet and we look at, just to give you the background here, this is what the, is this create tweet? Let me find the create tweet for you. So this is the create tweet. And in here, you'll notice that we've got, we're passing in from SharePoint that JSON form. I need to edit that because it always does that. Get something wick. Right. So this is the JSON form for a tweet. Let me expand that down. So we've got, we're expecting one of topic. We're expecting one of tone of voice, which actually is a select. And that's it. And they're both mandatory. So let's go look at the power up topic, tone of voice. And there's a big list of all the tones of voices. And so what will happen is we've provisioned something called call to action. That looks like a token that's not been substituted. So how do we do that? Here, I've got something I prepared earlier. So I want to change that tweet tool so that we actually include a call to action. And so I've got the existing one now. So there's the tone of voice with all of the pull down list of all the typical tones of voices. I got that from AI, by the way. Then here we go. What's your tweet about? But I also want to add call to action. Let's go copy that. Let's go back to SharePoint. Let's go in here, control A. Let's get rid of it, save it. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come out of it because I've not provisioned anything to refresh the data source automatically. So I'm going to go over there and I'm just going to refresh this data source. So I'm going to go to data. It's the tools list. So I'm going to refresh that. Then I've, you notice I've changed nothing about power apps whatsoever. And now you've got this call to action. And now if I type in there, that's resolved. So that's perfect. So you could then just get that, which is an output property. And we could send that into Power Automate and off to ChatGPT, which is absolutely awesome. I keep saying ChatGPT, but the OpenAI, which is OpenAI is the company behind ChatGPT. And we use the OpenAI service, not ChatGPT. But it's just everybody understands it. it's ChatGPT. So that's a good example of AI tools. So we've got quite a few of these AI tools. So we've got one that creates us a TikTok script. We're asking the user for information to help us create that TikTok video. Then I've got another tool which I was playing with, which was basically create me a CSV. So create me a table from a CSV. Sorry. So you expect a table here. I'm not going to run these now. They take a while to run. And I wanted to show you one actually the YouTube thumbnail. I've just finished this one. So this YouTube thumbnail generator now behind the scenes, 
we use something called render form. Let me just show you render form. Let me just bring it up because it's pretty cool in my templates. So we've got two images here and you'll notice when you click on here, this is placeholder one, placeholder three, placeholder, placeholder two. So that's one, two, three. And the template ID is somewhere in here, there. Green Wasp Retire. Now, for whatever reason, I can't change that. It just seems to do it randomly. I don't know how you change that. So that's the template. And I've got another one in here, which is the blue one, which happens to be the mindless, mossless leap softly, blah, blah, blah. And again, I've got three placeholders. And what this tool allows you to do is effectively call it via the API, and it will replace these placeholders with the values that you send in. And so the way I do that in this tool is if I go here and I say Mark Jones PCF and I'm picking the green wasps. So as one of the examples, you can also pick, we've only got two at the moment that do their own thumbnails. So if we go pick that, run it, here we go, here we go, should work. Unless I've broken something, it's entirely possible. Mark Jones PCF, so that's now an image I can save. So I could just literally do a save as download that and we can set that into YouTube. If I want to go do another one, Let's go do the mindless leap softly one, which should be a blue one. Okay, you might do his PCF, there you go, which is cool. And that's such a time saver. And it's so weird, I was speaking to John earlier on that we have got these in Canva, but the problem is you can't find them in Canva and you've got to load up another application and you've got to think, oh, I've got to go and create those thumbnails. Which one do I use? Where are they? Download it. And I know it probably only take another 30, 40, 50 seconds. But if you do enough of these, it gets on your nerves and it irritates you. You just want one simple way to find the tools that you want to use. And that's the plan here is what we're trying to do is consolidate all these little tasks under one tool well. So that's that. Now, the next thing is I'm trying to make a really clean architecture here. So if you look at the architecture we've got to do all the wizardry, we've got Power Automate Flow. So we've got this thing called Tool Belt Sync, and that is the only Power Automate flow that we have in the old application and that deals with all of the tools so if you go and look at the tool on here and let's pull up the ai tool screen then if we go to this run and we pick the on select here expand this you'll see down here expand the formula bar you'll see that effectively we are running tool belt sync and we're passing in the output from my json form control and also the output that we created that could go to ai and then also the flow ID. And the flow ID is sent in via SharePoint. So this is the flow ID we're passing here. So realistically, what I do is I'm saying what, what Power Automate flow needs to be run in order to service the tool with its parameters. So whatever we do, we're sending in the JSON form output. So the whole output of what you put in the form is going into the single flow. And then I'm in the process of finding the best way trying to create child flow. So let me show you what I've got so far. So if we go in here, this is tool belt sync. So this is the main flow that every single tool is going to send its data to. And so this is a instantly triggered power automate flow. And I'm passing in the three values, which is equivalent to what we've just seen here. So remember, we've got the JSON full output. So that's JSON coming in. Then we've got text, which is the resolved prompt that's come over from my control. That you can send it to AI, and then we've got the flow ID. So we look in here, we've got JSON form resolve prompt. So these parameters are going to come in. Then what I do is I pass the JSON form because we need to be able to use it, although I'm not using it currently, but we need to be able to use it later on. Then I create a conversation ID, which is just a GUID. And then what I'm going to do is I've initialized a variable because what I want to do is imagine we've got 20 tools and we've got one flow that serves every tool. Well, the only requirement of that tool really is to send a text string back. So it's to do the work and send a text string back. And that could be, if you're going off to AI, you, you want to send back the response from AI. But if you're going to go and send an email, it sends the email and you might get a response back saying email sent okay. So the only job of these child flows is to get string back into this. So this is going to come into this variable. And then I've just literally done this and I want a better way of doing it. So effectively, you remember I said here, we pass in the flow ID. So remember that's tool belt open AI chat completion. So let's go back to my flow. This, I look up the flow ID that's passed in as a parameter. And if it's got the YouTube one, you passed in the YouTube key for the flow. 
What I want to do is I want to go run this one. Now, what I'd like to do is dynamically pass that, because funny enough, that's exactly the same name, but I've got problems trying to pass in the parameters because Flow doesn't know it at runtime. It only knows it at design time. So I think I might have to move away from using child flows and use the HTTP action to call another flow and have them nested that way because it'd be way more flexible because then I wouldn't need this switch statement. I could just go and lock up the flow ID and say, what's the endpoint for that and send the whole payload to it. So what did we send to these child flows? Well, we send JSON and we also send the resolve prompt of whether they want to use it or not. And then once we get the flow response back, I store it into child flow response. Then I store with the conversation ID, which is unique, I created up here, there, created a GUID, I store that in SharePoint. And then as a response, so I store that in SharePoint, and then I store the message that's come back from the child flow. And then as a final response for the entire Power Automate flow, I send back to the Power App response, which is actually a response from the child flow, which you may or may not want to use in your Power App, we don't currently. And then the conversation ID. So when the conversation ID, which is a GUID, comes back, what we effectively do is we're able to bind that to a list, a gallery. So we look on the tool screen, move that out of the way. Let's have a look here. So this is a gallery of items, items, so AI conversation. So when the flow's done its job, it writes into the SharePoint list the text that's come back from this child flow. And then I filter it by based on the current conversation ID, which I set after the run. So if you look, remember that, our current conversation ID, if we look here, and then we go towards select. What I do is I first off run the thing. And once we've got a response, I get the response conversation ID back from it and I store it in var current conversation ID. And then for mobile reasons, I'm, I need to show the results because on a mobile, there's no room to show this entire screen. So what effectively what I do is I just show that part on mobile and then this part becomes available once the flows come back. So it's like it, on mobile, it can page like that. So you, the whole thing doesn't wrap, so it's a nice experience. So to have a look at the child, one of the child flows, so this one is the toolbar open AI chat completion. So remember, this is called from the parent flow, and it's it takes the prompt, takes the JSON form, and then effectively what we do, because it's really nice, because we've got the prompt coming in, and I've already done the hard work in the JSON form control, I can just basically put that prompt into an open AI request, and then pass the response, initialize the variable to get the response in, and then you need to go through because it's an array that comes back from OpenAI. And we create a string array, so we get the final response back from OpenAI with the response saying in answer to your prompt. Then that gets saved by the master flow into SharePoint there. So once it's gone down this leg, this is the OpenAI version, comes down here, then that leg gets sent in and set in there. And then that's back into Power Apps. And so that's where I've got to so far. I'm really pleased with the JSON form controller. A lot of the time I was thinking, oh God, is this worth it? Why don't I just find another way of dynamically creating the form? But honestly, I think we're going to use this absolutely loads because something like this has got great potential if you think about it, because you could create surveys, you could create quizzes, you could create so many different things and not have to get into Power Apps to create the form. So I really like it. What am I working on next? That's a great question. Thank you for asking, Mark. Friday, I'm off to the, watch the World Cup and I've gone for 10 days, so probably not much. But tomorrow, I'm probably going to start to have a think about trying to give our AI some awareness of our data. So what I want to do, I want to train it on our own data. So that will improve the prompts when we go to AI because it will know about our data. And I want to use something called embeddings and give it a memory. So I'm going to start looking into how I do that. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to try and find a better way because it's bugging me. Tell I'm a developer. It's bugging me that I've got to do this switch. I want to find a better way of doing that without having to use the HTTP action. But if I have to, I will. So that's where we are. If you're interested, give me a thumbs up. If you're not interested, give me a thumbs down. Hope that's helpful. And I hope you're enjoying our journey. And I'll see you, if not tomorrow, I'll see you after the World Cup. Ta-da.